Hello and welcome to a new Vanguard news video. Yes, uh, this is going to be going up as probably a bonus upload or something, I don't know. I've been doing the daily Vanguard Zero video, so I don't really know where this is going to be uploaded in the meantime. But we got two pretty significant pieces of news recently that I wanted to talk about. One of them Vanguard Zero related and the other one Vanguard Anime related. So we're going to talk about that. So first we're going to talk about Vanguard Zero because I want to get that out of the way first. Yes, now that I've been playing Vanguard Zero, if you aren't aware, somehow go and watch my Vanguard Zero series. Uh, I'm having a lot of fun with that. I'm recording myself playing through the English version of Cardfight Vanguard Zero and I'm really, really enjoying it so far. Uh, I'm having a lot of fun with it and that's why I'm going to be talking about Vanguard Zero a lot on my channel. Starting with some Japanese news. Now I'm not going to cover the Japanese news all too often because I'm playing the English version but this one was so big, oh boy that I had to mention it. So Vanguard Zero in Japanese is entering the Asia Circa arc and we are getting uh, some new decks along with Aichi's Gold Paladin deck and the most important one, we're getting Wreckers Angel Feathers. Hell yeah. I am so excited for this. Uh, of course, no real word on when this is coming to the English version, but hopefully not too long, right? Hopefully only a handful of months. And when that happens, oh boy, I'm, I'm building that Wrecker deck. I don't care what anyone says. So yeah, I don't have much else to really say about that news there. This is mainly actually a Vanguard IV video, but I kind of had to throw that there. Right, so now let's get into Carbite Vanguard IV. We got some more information about that. Basically, Carbite Vanguard IV is the next Carbite Vanguard anime. It will be airing on April 25th, pretty much immediately after the Shinemon arc ends. And it is a magical girl anime. Yeah, that one's interesting. Now, they mentioned that when they originally revealed it all the way back in January. And I thought they meant that like as a joke or something like that. I didn't really know what they meant by Magical Girl Anime. But here they have very much just doubled down and gone, no, when we said Magical Girl Anime, we really meant it. And so we see Emmy and this other character transformed into Magical Girls. Yeah, pretty crazy actually. And uh, it's interesting. So one thing I want to mention right off the bat is the new logo. Yes, Carbite Vanguard IV has a new logo. And ever since the reboot era of Carbite Vanguard has started, they've kind of just stuck with the generic logo for everything. Every time they release anything new Vanguard related, it will just have the generic reboot logo attached to it. Even the Shinemon arc, it didn't have a like subtitle in the logo or anything. Whenever they did anything Shinemon arc related, it would just be Carbite Vanguard and that would be it. And I kind of complained about that because it just makes things needlessly confusing. Why not put Shinemon in the logo? Well, they've addressed that. They've gone above and beyond, actually. Instead of doing what they used to do with old story arcs, where they would just take the already existing logo and then just put the name of the story arc as a subtitle. No, 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 no. They have completely redesigned the logo from scratch for this new anime series specifically. And it's really cool looking. Uh, it fits the tone that they're going for with this new anime. And it looks really cool. So I, I appreciate that. They, they're, they're kind of overcompensating recently. And so my thoughts on this series, because we haven't actually got that much new, we just got a few uh, a few images and some small bits of information and those will be up on screen as I'm talking. Immediately, my opinion is that I'm interested more so than anything. Not necessarily like hyped or anything like that, because I need to see how they implement this, because this is very much an anime that could be bad. In fact, I kind of expect this announcement to get quite a bit of hate, like a card game anime doing magical girl stuff. That's weird, but it's because it's weird that I like it. There are also some rumors and words going around that this anime might not feature any card fights at all. Uh, I don't know if that was 100% confirmed or not. I, I'm kind of having difficulty looking into that because the English translations of this news hasn't gone up. However, I have seen a case of Emmy implying that she won't be card fighting in this arc. So I don't know. And that's the thing. 
where it's so uncertain and confused as to what this new anime is that that's what's got me interested. I really like that I don't know what the deal with it is and I like how random it seems. It seems like they're actually taking risks here and chances and I like that because well yeah a magical girl anime is a card game anime? Why? These two things don't go together. I mean, they do because actually I like both. I'm a big fan of Free Cure, which is a really big, long-running, magical girl anime. And of course it goes without saying that I like card game anime. So I like this idea of combining the two. It seems so random and weird, but in a way that could work. Not necessarily that it will, but it could. And I really like that, again, even if it does fail and it sucks, which I it might, it definitely could, I'm not getting my hopes too high here, I feel like if it does suck, it'll suck in an interesting and unique way that Vanguard hasn't particularly failed in before, right? Like, a lot of my problems with the reboot era have been fairly boring problems and ones that made me just not really want to watch anymore. But if this has problems, which it no doubtably will, there'll be problems that'll be interesting and weird and will make me want to keep watching anyway just to see what they do with it. And I like that. And I also like, again, it's quite brave. Now, of course, I'm pretty reluctant to call any company this big brave. But Kagem animes and especially Vanguard have been seen as like a teenage boys club in Japan. Uh, that seems to be their main target audience. And so going for an anime like this is one that's going to scare and alienate fans, especially after playing it safe for so long. And I'm interested to see if that will work or not. Because obviously Vanguard and Bushiroad themselves must have some faith in it, otherwise they wouldn't be doing it. But it'll be interesting to see whether or not this does get the viewings they need, or whether or not it will sell the amount of cards that it needs. Because again, this this series doesn't seem to be promoting all too many new cards. But I guess we'll see. Again, a change to the formula is something that's needed, and if it doesn't work, and even if it does work, chances are the next anime that comes after this one will be a more fairly standard by the numbers Vanguard series anyway. As to where this leaves the G reboot, I, I, I don't know. Bushiroad seem to be trying their absolute hardest to make this G reboot situation as confusing as possible because it seems to me like they've basically turned the Shine Monarch into the G reboot at this point because they've now resorted to recreating moments from G just straight up in the Shine Monarch. So I guess that that is the G reboot now. I don't know. It's difficult to say. It's as if Bushiro are trying to make that intentionally as confusing as possible. So we just won't worry about it for now. I don't, at the end of the day, I don't really mind whether or not G gets adapted. I've had some time to think about it and I, I really like the inclusion of Ibuki and Suiko. It seems very random, but now that I've thought about it, I like it a lot. Because Emmy being the protagonist, and I was correct last time in my other video about if Emmy is indeed wearing Aichi's coat now that it's in colour, we've basically confirmed that. Suiko, I actually really like as sort of this mentor character to Emmy. I think that could work a lot. Emmy's already friends with Rekka, so it makes sense that she would warm up to Suiko pretty quickly. And Suiko seems to be this fairly mature adult figure who can be someone that Emmy kind of looks up to so I really like the kind of potential dynamic there and I like bringing back Suiko because I feel like she was the Tatsunagi that had the least going on with her I mean other than Gnome but I mean yeah Gnome's never really had anything going on with him and Ibuki is great specifically because of this new direction they're going in Ibuki as a character has always been taken himself very seriously. At one point he was the villain in the Deleters arc and in Neon Messiah and even when he does get redeemed and becomes Chrono's rival and everything he still takes himself very seriously. So to see him as a major character in this magical girl anime is going to be really funny and it's going to be the lead up and build up for a lot of jokes. Jokes that might actually be funny and so I like that. Or maybe not, or maybe he will be there to kind of balance out the tone. I don't know. Or honestly, my more cynical brain went, Ibuki's there so that people can ship him with Suiko. Maybe, I don't know. Vanguard have proven time and time again that they are not above ship baiting. So I guess we'll see. So 
yes, those are my opinions on Combat Vanguard IV and of course the very small bit of Vanguard Zero news. So I guess I'll see you later uh, with more Vanguard content basically. Uh, see ya!